Well, good morning everybody. My name is Dr. J.D. Swanson and welcome to 15 Minutes of Thought. I'm the author of Karate Science and today what we're going to be talking about is an extension of a, another one that we did back, I think it was number 19, which was all on back stance called Kutsudach. But what I want to do today is we're going to do away with the actual Shuto Kokutsu. I'm going to review a couple of the major points there, but I do encourage you to go back to that video and have a look. Um, but what I want to do is I want to encourage that and talk about it in terms of grading and testing basics, the same way that we sort of think about it. And then we'll talk about some dynamics, um, probably in a future 15 minutes of thought um, with, that, with that actual stance. So without further ado, let's get started. Let's... Very good. So what I want you to do is I want you to start with the vanilla core kutsudachi, right? The vanilla stance. So again, just making the position make sure rear leg right the outside edge of the foot is straight right not the center of the foot the outside edge bend the knee down so it's tracking over the foot like so don't actively push it out but have that feeling of it just bending along its the knee along its natural course of action the front leg make sure it's pointing straight ahead again i for me i do it on the outside edge of my foot pointing straight ahead so there's a slight inward turn but you can turn it out depending on how your knee joint is and then, of course, my knee naturally tracking over that foot if I needed to. From here, I actively push on my front leg back into the stance to create pressure this way. So we end up with this wonderful, if I, something drops down out of my belt, it's exactly one third, one third, one third, right, to give us that classic 70-30 position. So what I want you to do is just standing here, and then from here, just pull up, one, then push out, two, pull up, push out, pull up, push out, this feeling. As you step, you shouldn't feel your body weight sort of, you know, rocking back and forth. Just feel up, back, up, back. I'm not rock, 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 none of this. Just keep it nice, still and connected. Practice that 20, 30 times and then come back to me. Excellent, so you've done that. Now, let's do the opposite. Let's start from Heizuko. Now let's drive our body weight back. Itch. So now the body weight shifts. Feel that drive back, feel that drop into the back foot. Feel the push, really think about that push off the front leg. Come up and back. Up, back. Up, back. Up, back. With each one, don't be afraid if your rear foot if you can't feel that tension in the rear foot, check it. Make sure it's not sticking out. Right, each time. Up, back, up, back. Again, 20 to 30 times. Notice there, I was like, oh, that feels a little bit off. I'm on camera, oh my goodness, how scary. I double check my foot. You must always do this. Right, if something feels off, check it and correct it in real time. So, 20 to 30 times the backward step, just to warm your body up. Excellent. Now, from here, using it with the block. Stepping forward, kokuts, shituke. Now switch, one, two. One, two. Just like an MP. So practicing that, nice and simple, bop, bop, just to get moving. Again, 20, 30 times. Then, from there, backwards. like so, 20 to 30 times. So practicing both. Give that a go. Excellent. Now for the last one of this series. Forward, switch, back, switch. Forward, switch, back, switch. Give that a go, 20 to 30 times. Off you go. Excellent. So some, th some things that should be good, again, each time be very, um, very uh, vigilant with your stance as you check it. Second thing is you make the block, make sure your shitos are nice and clean. No opening and closing as you go through. Make sure you're turning your shito all the way around. When I was a little boy, they used to say that it was like we were in the, um, the Boy Scouts. And they'd put a knife at the edge of our hand and we'd go around and we'd chop down trees. Right, that feeling. Don't hit with high shoe. Make sure it's turned. Make sure the block is covering your body 
expand the shoulder out. Don't turn the edge of the arm out. That's going to they're going to torque your rotator cuff. Simply expand to where it needs, needs to be, but not over expand. Right? Put it right there in the middle. In fact, huh, funny, right? Just allow it to sit in its natural position. We have a tendency to go here when we're in shutuke. Shuto. Allow it rather here to turn, to cover your body as needed. So with those points, go back, practice that last drill one more time, thinking about those pieces. And then what we'll do is we'll add the punches and the kicks from there on. Okay? So give that a go. Excellent. So the next piece, and we've talked about this also, is the idea of shituke with gyakuzuki. So as you make that transition between one stance and the next, think about what leg is the power leg, what one's the driving leg. And at the end of the day, all you're thinking about is the only thing that matters is where that power is driving, what direction you want to go. So one of the, there's two major mistakes that I see, two fundamental mistakes I see people do in this, and I'll demonstrate both. One of them is if I look straight onto you, the person's here, and what they do is they place their foot and then they push on an angle. So you can see, rather than me just freaking hitting you straight in, what they've done is they've gone out and their body center is moving along this line rather than directly towards you. So as you drive, what you want to do is pay attention to the hip body and push, push. That's mistake number one. Mistake number two is seen from the side. And what they'll do here is they'll push, they rotate, they punch, and their body center doesn't drive forward. You want your body center um, to drive forward and into your target. Right, as this rear leg extends, your center um, moves forward. Quite often people will, and there's no net movement of the body center. They've simply rotated about their center rather than just driving forward along this hip and really making use of that driving leg. Those are the two major mistakes. There's one other minor mistake, but it's a timing mistake. And that's the movement of this front foot first. So sometimes you'll see people here, they place the foot, then hit. At the end of the day, this rear foot being placing, or placing, is a really, it's a break. What you want to think about is you want to think about the drive of this rear leg driving into the technique. So rather than having this place hit, rather simply think about just jamming this foot, driving the hip, right? And I'm going to just expand it just to be an idiot, so I'm going to drive off my gastronemus and come up on the ball of my foot. But feel here, that feeling, that flavor of technique. You want to create the straight drive from your leg up through your hip, into your target, up through your hip, into your target. So your fist is following a straight line, your leg is pumping hip, body, all in the same direction. The front foot will move as a matter of consequence. So allow that to happen with the technique. Think about this, don't worry about the front leg. You're really good at not falling on your face, believe me. So what I'd like you to practice, is our same drill that we did before. Thinking here, step forward, kokuts, then drive. Then from here, switch feet, kokuts, then drive. Then back, then drive. Then forward, back, then drive. Simple as that. Thinking about those major points. One, driving your body forward not to the side. Two, driving your body forward and not leaving it where it is. So in both those dimensions, here as well as leaving it centered. So make sure, forward, all your momentum's this way. And then thirdly, drive off the back leg. Don't place the front foot first. Give that a go. Excellent, okay, good. So you've built that up. So that takes you round to about brown belt, yeah? From here now, Let's add the kick. So front kick in Kokutsu Dutch shouldn't need to be this big rocking back sort of kick, right? And you see this in the, in the testing basic. You're here, 
you make the kick and drive. So you've got to understand the same driving points that we've just talked about, but now we've got the added trickiness of a kick. So as you make that kick, don't rock back to get your balance and then kick. If I have a target, right, I want, if I rock back, I can't reach it. What I've got to do is I've got to keep my center in, now I can reach it easily. Right, I've got to keep the strength of my stance in. How do you do that? How do you not rock back? In my mind, I keep two things in mind. Number one, I push down with this hip. Number two, I lift high with this knee. So when I kick, I'm thinking down and up. This feeling. I'm thinking down and up. Here, 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 here. Then the rest of the technique will flow. So when it's here, lift, lift. Try not to lift. Don't take the body weight back. If you find that you have to rock back, probably you're called kutsudachi, the initial structure is probably incorrect to start with. Right? This necessitates me having to roll back. So make sure you're at the correct weight distribution, 70, 30, push down, lift up, then the kick is easy. So with that in mind, and again, make sure you're hitting with the ball, blah, 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 blah all of those good things you know about front kick. So with that in mind, the, the drill, just incorporate into our current drill. So it's gonna be one, then two, then from here switch, one, two, then back, one, two, then forward, one, two. Just like so. Give that a go, 20, 30 reps, thinking about the way that your hip behaves. Give it a go. Excellent, all done, good. So now let's go on to the knee down basic. What this requires now, is it requires you to do the kick, remain in kokuts, and make gyakuzuki in that position. The thing that becomes important, and this is good practice for things like hand godam, we'll talk about that later. But what you wanna do is remember, kokuts like kibadach, in my mind, has shaman, Hami, shaman, hami. Kokutsudach has hami and shaman. There is a small amount of movement. You see it exemplified in hand nidam. One, hami, or fully, fully back. Shaman, right, within the integrity of the stance. Back to hami, driving forward. So I have that already in, ingrained into the stance. It's the same deal here. What you're going to do is you're going to make the kick and you're going to land down in shawman as far as your hip allows you, right? So that's right up. Remember the rule? If I turn too far, my knee starts to collapse. I go down as far as I can push this knee forward. Then I take the rest of it in my spine like so through this rotation here. The key thing is, of course, it must be timed. So how that might look is from here, you make the kokut start, then I make the kick, boom, and drive. Just like so. So what you want is you want that nice kick, feel the placement of the leg, and the drive of this rear leg happening simultaneously. So it's not just this sort of impotent kind of this, there's a drive of the hip, a drive on the back leg as I come down. This drives. Yeah. And you can see my belt move as I'm here, kick, to drive down and into the technique. Right, so you want that feeling. So you want that timing in my mind. As I hit, I throw my front leg down hard. I drive off my back leg and I throw the punch. And I have it have that sort of kind of feeling, that one feeling of bah, just the whole thing connecting at once. So once again, you can practice this within our drill. Right, from here, one, two, three, then from here, switching feet, one, two, three, three, four, five, like so. 
And so with that, give that a go now. Right, let that practice in. Excellent. So one other sort of variation, of course, is with Moashige. Right, but the same principles exist here. When you make the stance, keep that same pressure in the hip. Everyone's like, oh, Moashige is so hard. No, it's just my giddy on its side. So allow from here, that same down knee up that you had a my giddy, now just think knee down, leg up for moash. And it can be chewed on or jawed on, depending on where you need it to be. Right, so again, it's that same feeling. Push down, lift up. Here, your giddy, whoop. Whichever you want to do. Here, oh, whoop. Drive whichever way you want to do it. So you can easily substitute Maigiri for Mwashigiri with some practice of just thinking. But the principle, the idea of pushing down and lifting up, remains the same. That pushing down keeps your body center anchored, keeps this anchored here. I can lift and stay. If I release it, I rock. So keep here and lift. Keep here and lift. Keep here and lift, keep here and lift, and lift, and so forth. So with that, we're going to stop here for today. I hope you have an awesome day. I look forward to talking to you again soon. Again, review number 19, because we go into a lot more depth and training gels to really get Kokut's Dutch right, because it's a toughie. So with that, have an awesome day, and I'll see you again soon. Hey, what's...